Uh, okay, so let me ask you about Mars. You mentioned it would be great for science to put um, a base on the moon to do some research, but the truly big leap, again, in this category of seemingly impossible, is to put a human being on Mars. When do you think SpaceX will land a human being on Mars? Hmm. Best case is about five years, worst case, 10 years. What are the determining factors, would you say, from an engineering perspective, or is that, that not the bottlenecks? Uh, you know, it's, it's fundamentally, um, you know, engineering the, the vehicle. Um, I mean, Starship is the most co complex and advanced rocket that's ever been made by, I don't know, order of magnitude or something like that. It's a lot. It's really next level. So, um, and the fundamental optimization of Starship is minimizing cost per ton to orbit and ultimately cost per ton to the surface of Mars. Um, this may seem like a mercantile objective, but it is actually the thing that needs to be optimized. Um, like there is a certain cost per ton to the surface of Mars where we can afford to establish a self-sustaining uh, city. Um, and, the, and, and then above that, we cannot afford to do it. Um, so right, right now, you couldn't fly to Mars for a trillion dollars. No amount of money could get you a ticket to Mars. So we need to get that above, uh, you know, to get that like something that is actually possible at all. Um, um, but but then but that's that's we, we don't we don't just want to have you know with Mars flags and footprints and then not come back for a half century like we did with the Moon. Uh, in in order to pass a very important great filter, I think we we need to be a multi planet species. Um, this but, may sound somewhat esoteric to to a lot of people, but uh, like eventually, given enough time, uh, that's something the Earth is likely to experience some calamity um, that could be uh, something that humans do to themselves or an external event like happened to the dinosaurs. Um, and um, but but you know eventually. And, and if, 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 none, none, if, if none of that happens, and somehow magically we, we keep going, uh, then the, the sun will ex the sun is gradually expanding, um, and will en engulf the Earth, um, and probably Earth gets too hot for uh, life in uh, about five hundred million years. It's a long time, but that's only ten percent longer than Earth has been around. And so, if you think about like the the current situation, it's really remarkable um, and kind of hard to believe, but uh, Earth's been around four and a half billion years, and this is the first time in four and a half billion years that it's been possible to extend life beyond Earth. And that window of opportunity may be open for a long time, and I hope it is, but it also may be open for a short time. And we should, uh, I think it is wise for us to uh, act quickly while the window is open, just in case it, it closes. Yeah, the existence of nuclear weapons, pandemics, all kinds of threats Yeah, should... Uh, should kind of um, give us some motivation. I mean, civilization could get, um, could die with a bang or a whimper. You know, if it's a, uh, if it dies a demographic collapse, then it's more of a whimper, <laughs> obviously. Uh, but, and if it's World War Three, it's more of a bang. Uh, but, but these are all risks. Um, I mean, it's important to think of these things and just, you know, think of things as like probabilities, not certainties. Um, there's a certain probability that, uh, something bad will happen on earth. I, I like, I think most likely the future will be good. Um, but there's like, let's say for argument's sake, um, a 1% chance per century of, of a civilization ending event. Like that was Stephen Hawking's estimate. 